welcome you all for a new video on semiconductor material this video will help you to solve problems related to excess carrier concentration so meanwhile solving the problems itself i'll also explain how these excess carriers are coming into picture in a semiconductor material so the first problem that i've taken is the whole concentration in a sample of silicon material is p of x so which means it is varying according to the length of the sample of silicon which is in terms of 10 to the power 13 exponential of minus x by lp per centimeter cube where lp which is the whole diffusion length is being given as 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter so the whole diffusion coefficient dp is also given as 26 centimeter square per second determine the whole diffusion current density at x equal to 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter and also we need to identify what is the drift mobility so now from the given problem statement, we understood that the whole concentration is varying exponentially. Exponential of minus x by Lp per centimeter cube, where Lp, the whole diffusion length, was also given as 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter. Now we need to estimate the whole diffusion current density, which we denoted in terms of capital J, which is nothing but q into 5p which means q is the charge of the particle multiplied by the particle flux density and here it is whole flux density so here this one will become as minus q in terms of dp diffusion coefficient whole diffusion coefficient and this is again the whole concentration is varying along the distance x and also we know that the diffusion currents are completely due to the concentration gradient and for the same gradient, the electrons and holes, they move in the same direction only. But the resulting currents or the current density will be in opposite direction. That is why this negative sign has been indicated here. For electron diffusion current density, it will be Q capital DN, which is the electron diffusion coefficient into DN by DX. And we know that diffusion currents are mainly due to the concentration gradient so that is why it is indicated in terms of dp by dx or in terms of dn by dx now to proceed with our objective of finding out the whole diffusion current density first we need to estimate what is dp by dx so p of x has been given for us so it is d by dx in terms of p of x so which is d by dx into 10 to the power 13 exponential of minus x by lp which in turn will give us 10 to the power 13 minus 1 by lp into exponential of minus x by lp say suppose if the whole concentration whatever we have considered as p of x has been given in a different way so this is not associated with this particular problem but i'm just telling you the other way of asking these kind of problems so if whole concentration varies uh, linearly uh, say from 10 to the power 18 to 2 into 10 to the power 18 holes per centimeter cube over a distance of 0 0.01 centimeter so if this is the case then dp by dx has to be computed in terms of 2 into 10 to the power 18 minus 10 to the power 18 because it was given very clearly that it is varying from this value to this value so higher value minus the lower value divided over a distance or particular distance is also given to us so which is 0 0.01 so this is one sample question where the same whole concentration can be changed and asked so now let us revert back our discussion to our main problem statement where we have got p of x and we have just attained what is dp by dx now we will substitute this dp by dx in our main equation which is the whole diffusion current density now after substituting the estimated value of dp by dx we have to find out the whole diffusion current density at x equal to 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter now i think we have all the values the electronic charge q we know dp which is already given as 26 centimeter square per second which is the diffusion coefficient of holes where we also know the whole diffusion length lp is also given and here also we need to substitute the same lp x by lp so 10 to the power minus 6 by 10 to the power minus 6 becomes 1 so it is just exponential of minus 1 that we need to find out 
and all other values we can just multiply so that the final whole diffusion current density will be in terms of 15.303 amperes per centimeter square suppose in the same question if the cross-sectional area of this particular semiconducting material has been given then we can also find out what is the current through the semiconducting material by multiplying the diffusion current density and the cross-sectional area now finally we also need to estimate the drift mobility and here throughout the problem the discussion was only restricted with respect to the holes so therefore i have just calculated what is the drift mobility due to the hole concentration and according to einstein's relation we know that the ratio of diffusion coefficient to the mobility under thermal equilibrium is equivalent to the old equivalent of the temperature so keeping this relation in mind i know what is the diffusion coefficient of the holes and this old equivalent of the temperature which is kt by q also it is known because it is given for 300 kelvin or even if the temperature is changed also we can just substitute the boltzmann constant electronic charge and if further temperature is being given we can also estimate what is kt by q and dp is also known to us so it is very easy to find out what is the drift mobility due to holes which is in terms of thousand centimeter square per volt per second so now let us solve one more problem related to the carrier concentration but this time it is purely uh, somewhat related to the excess carrier concentration where we'll get to know about some terms related to excess electron concentration or electron hole recombination generation carrier lifetime so some new terms will be introduced into the problem statement and then we will see how to solve uh, these kind of problems first let us consider a sample of indium phosphide material at t equal to 300 kelvin so we need to note down that the material is not silicon so therefore the intrinsic carrier concentration value can change the ni value which i'm talking about and which is uniformly doped with acceptor impurity atoms so na has been given as 2.5 into 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube assume an excess carrier lifetime of 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 second if the excess electrons generated is given by del n of 0 equal to 6 into 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube calculate the excess electron concentration at time t equal to 6 microseconds also we need to determine the electron hole recombination rate and total concentration of electrons so there are so many things to identify so let us break down the problem statement into two to three segments and then let us solve first let us understand about the given data where we know what is the accepted doping concentration which is 2.5 into 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube excess carrier lifetime has been given which is denoted by tau and not and the excess electron so usually electron concentration we write it as n and at thermal equilibrium we write it as n naught and here it is excess electron so we write it as del n and that is given as 600 into the power 15 per centimeter cube so now the point is what are these excess carriers so that question we do have it in our mind what are excess charge carriers in a semiconductor so the question is very simple where the charge carriers in semiconductors which are excess out of the thermal equilibrium value is what we call it as excess carriers this is a glimpse of carrier generation and recombination process where you can even consider this as a photo generation process where the process of generating the excess charge carriers by shining a light onto the semiconductor so which means if a photon energy which is greater than the band gap of the semiconductor falls onto it the energy of the photon is absorbed by an electron in the valence band and it is getting excited to the conduction band so this is the generation of electron hole pair which is the optically generated why do i say it is optically generated because it has absorbed the light that falls onto it okay so this is an optically generated electron and hole so the electron and hole concentrations are equal here and the direct band to band recombination when it happens is an electron at the conduction band minima directly falls into a hole at the valence band maxima releasing the same amount of energy as a photon so as a result here the electron hole pair vanishes so that is what we call it as electron hole pair recombination so this type of recombination mechanism is happening in the 
direct band gap semiconductors where for example we have seen the direct band gap semiconductors are gallium arsenide indium phosphide this problem is also about the indium phosphide only so here the generation and the recombination are a continuous process in a direct band gap semiconductor and that is why i have written at the thermal equilibrium value the generation and the recombination rates are equal but what are these excess electrons and holes which means whatever charge carriers that are present in the semiconductor that are excess to the thermal equilibrium value is what we call it as excess carriers and for a direct band to band generation the excess electrons and the holes both are created in pairs so which means the concentration of electron in total will become n not plus del n so this del n is what we call it as the excess electron concentration n is the total electron concentration and n not is the equilibrium electron concentration so apart from this equilibrium electron concentration there are excess electrons and during direct band to band generation these excess electrons and excess holes that are generated will also be in pairs so therefore del n and del p will also be equal because the total concentration of holes also we write it as p is equal to p not plus del p so from this equation you can easily find out what are the excess electron concentration and excess hole concentration also what is this carrier lifetime that we need to understand which is the time with which a charge carrier exists before recombining with its opposite charge and gets annihilated which means before it is getting destroyed what is the lifetime of the charge carriers so which means the moment it got generated and the moment before it is getting destroyed or recombined or it is getting annihilated so that is what we call it as a majority carrier lifetime so that is usually denoted as tau and tau n not tau p not it all comes with respect to the type of semiconductor and for the equilibrium value and this is equivalent to the doping concentration value divided by the recombination rates so similarly for a p type semiconductor it will be the accepted doping concentration to the recombination rate now reverting back to a problem statement where we have this given data and we need to estimate the excess electron concentration at t equal to 6 microseconds so for that the equation has been taken as del n of 0 into exponential of minus t by tau n not which is there excess carrier lifetime so substituting all the values because del n of 0 is also given t 6 microseconds is given tau n not is given then we can find out what is the excess electron concentration at t equal to 6 microseconds now we have to find out what is the electron hole recombination rate where i have just taken the formula from the concept of excess carrier lifetime where the excess carrier recombination rate is excess electron concentration to the excess carrier lifetime so both the values are given we can just find out what is the recombination rate here and next we need to find out what is the total electron concentration as per the definition we know that it includes the thermal equilibrium value and the excess electron concentration now we have in our hand what is this excess electron concentration now we need to estimate what is n not and then we will have to substitute in this formula to find out the total electron concentration so to find out the electron concentration at the thermal equilibrium value as per our mass action law we have just taken ni square by p not where the p not value is not given directly instead we have got the accepted doping concentration value so we can just equate the whole concentration at thermal equilibrium as the acceptor doping concentration value so this is how you need to simplify the problem solution it's because uh, we should not get stuck up at this point with that we don't have the whole concentration of the thermal equilibrium value so instead we can just take the accepted doping concentration and just substitute here the n not equation just comes like this as ni square by na writing the value of ni we have to be little cautious because usually we have a practice of writing the ni value of silicon but here the problem statement has a different medical which is indium phosphide so that corresponding intrinsic area concentration i have taken as 1.3 into 10 to the power 7 divided by the accepted doping concentration which is given in the problem so then here we will be getting the equilibrium value of the electron concentration and then we have to just add along with the excess electron concentration that will give us 
the total electron concentration. Hope you all have enjoyed watching this video on solving problems related to again carrier concentration but here this particular video is given you an insight about what is the carrier generation and recombination process with which we have understood how the excess charge carriers comes into picture meet you all in another interesting video until then thank you all for watching this video through electronics insight channel